Okay, um, we are going to be talking about the course of the maxillary artery. Like I said before, uh, the maxillary artery is one of the contents of the um, infratemporal fossa. We did show you the infratemporal fossa. You should be able to close your eyes and see the infratemporal fossa in your mind's eye. And there's one thing about anatomy, especially if you have to go into surgery, um, you should be able to visualize structures deep to um, the skin. All right? Good. Now, the course of the maxillary artery, uh, important things that we should know is that the maxillary artery is one of the branches of the external carotid artery. The external carotid artery um, is um, one of the arteries that, um, that jump away from the arch of aorta. So, um, it is important to know the branches, all the branches of the, of the external carotid artery. Maxillary artery is one of them. We want to see the course of the maxillary artery. Okay, the, we're going to take this diagram, this first diagram here. The external carotid artery, you know, giving branches all the way, so it, ex it begins to travel superiorly, all right? Um, it begins to travel superiorly because it branches from the, um, the common carotid artery. Yeah, that's the common carotid artery. So the common carotid artery gives two branches we have. Uh, external carotid artery and internal carotid artery. So we're just looking at the in external carotid artery. So that's the external carotid artery traveling upward. It's going upward and then keeps going upward and that's it. All right. So it gives that's the superficial temporal artery. And right here, somewhere here at the neck of the mandible, it gives this artery up, which is the maxillary artery. It runs deep to the neck of the mandible. So this artery has in relationship to the pterygoid muscle. Here I represented the pterygoid muscle using a red micro ink. Here it is a green micro ink because I'm going to be representing my artery with a red marker so that we don't mix it up. Okay, so it has, in terms of description, its description, the course of this artery, the description of the course of this artery, it is in relation to the uh, lateral pterygoid muscle. So in relation to the lateral pterygoid muscle, it is divided into three parts. It is divided into three parts. Um, there's somewhere, I think, in the upper limb where we talked about a nerve, an artery that is uh, divided into three parts as a result of the... Which muscle is that? Yeah, tell me, which muscle is that? As a result of one muscle, I think that's the pectoralis minor muscle. So the pectoralis minor muscle will divide the, um, the axillary artery into three parts, okay, and the branches of the axillary artery. We talked about that. So it's almost the same thing that's happening here. The maxillary artery is divided into three parts. So we can see the three parts now. So it has the first part is pre, because it is before the pterygoid. So the pre pterygoid. So the first part is pre pterygoid. The second part is the pterygoid because it is just deep to the pterygoid muscle. And the third part is post pterygoid. That's the third part. All right? It is important to note that the first part gives five branches. So there are five branches five branches, the first part gave five branches. The second part gives four branches. 
something that's wrong with that, so let's see. So the first part gives five branches, the second part gives four branches, and the third part gives six branches. Together we have 15 branches that runs in this region. That's a lot of artery in that region. That's why it's important. Alright? So we look at this arteries one up to the other. So remember that this artery run all the way. It's going all the way there. So that's the artery. It runs deep to the neck and continue to run all the way there. And I'm going to use this as a dotted line and that's it. All right, and gives a lot of branches. So it curves from here to here. So this is the pre-pterygoid because it's before the pterygoid. This is the pterygoid, you know, portion, and this is the post-pterygoid portion. Now let's see these branches. So we're gonna use this here to represent what we just showed upward there. That's the external carotid artery. That's the superficial temporal artery. Now you have this as your maxillary artery and that's a dotted line because it is deep to the neck of the mandible and here you have it continues all the way and continues all the way and all that you have that so we don't see those branches now okay that's the artery that's the whole course of the artery. So we want to see now the branches of this artery. What are the branches of the artery? The first branch here. So it has a small branch here. That's a small branch. Okay. That's a deep auricular artery. So that's the deep. auricular artery that's a deep auricular artery and then we have the next one here it's going to the ear all the way there so that's your anterior tympanic artery because of course it has to supply the around the, the ear and the tympanic membrane. That's the anterior tympanic artery. And then we have, okay, there's something that we need to talk about here. It's important that we talk about there. This is the pterygo palatine fossa. That's the pterygo palatine fossa. That's a pterygopalatine fossa. Now the pterygopalatine fossa has an opening of uh, a foramen there. That's a foramen. That foramen is called a spinopalatine foramen. That's a foramen. That's a, that's a spinopalatine foramen. And then Let's see what it looks like right there. All right, folks, look at this. That's the maxilla. This is the maxilla. Right here is the lateral pterygoid plate. This is the lateral pterygoid plate. Now, between the lateral pterygoid plate and the maxilla, the posterior margin of the maxilla, there is a small space right there which you can see. I hope you can see that. So that's the maxilla, the posterior aspect of the maxilla. That's the pterygoid plate, the lateral pterygoid plate. Between the lateral pterygoid plate and the maxilla, there is a small space there that looks like a diamond shape. It's referred to as the pterygopalatine fossa. Now there, in that space, superior to that space, there's a foramen, there's a foramen there called a spinal palatine foramen. 
We also have posterior to that foramen, posterior to that foramen, you see that there, posterior to that foramen, if I am to open the skull, posterior to the foramen, just on the floor, just on the floor of the orbit, close to the inferior orbital fissure, that's the orbit. Right there is the inferior orbital fissure, and then we have a superior orbital fissure. Just on the floor, right in the middle, cranial fossa, you find the foramen rotundum. So we have a foramen rotundum right there. That's a foramen rotundum. We have a foramen rotundum right there. And then we have posterior to the foramen rotundum is a foramen ovale. That's the foramen ovale. And inferior or posterior to the foramen ovale is the foramen spinosum. So they are important for us because it is it's important for us to know that arteries will have to drive into from the extracranial compartment into the cranial compartment. So these arteries have, some of them have two courses. So there is an extracranial course and there's an intracranial course. So these, the first branch just is a deep auricular artery. And then we have an anterior tympanic artery. And then we have this artery that runs all the way going into this foramen spinosome, that is the middle meningeal artery. So the middle meningeal artery, so we have that as the middle. The middle meningeal artery. We'll talk about the middle meningeal artery in a short while. And then we have this artery that runs and go into the foramen ovale and that is the accessory meningeal artery that's the accessory meningeal artery right there we have an artery that descends downward and travel through a foramen there, that's a foramen there. This foramen is, and I want to show you that foramen right now. Let me get the foramen. This is a mandible. I'm sure we can see the mandible. In the middle surface of the mandible, there's a foramen called the mandible foramen, and that helps to drive structure through the foramen into a canal and the canal opens all the way look at that it opens all the way right there exit and that is the mental foramen so right here we have an opening here called the mental foramen and that's the canal i'm going to use dotted lines because we are supposed to be seeing it from the other side. Right? Good. This artery is the inferior alveolar, the inferior alveolar artery. That's the inferior alveolar artery. The inferior alveolar artery drives into this canal, which is the mandibular canal, and then exits as a mental artery. But I'll, at the same time, it gives another branch that supplies the mylohyoid muscle. So we have that to be the Milo higher artery or artery to myelohyoid muscle. 
all right? So, and this satisfies our first branches, the first five branches, one, two, three, four, and five. The deep auricular artery, which is the first branch of the ex which is the first branch of the maxillary artery, the anterior tympanic artery, the middle meningeal artery, we'll talk about the middle meningeal artery, accessory meningeal artery that passes through the foramen ovale, the middle meningeal artery passes through the foramen spinosum, and the inferior alveolar artery passes through the foramen, um, the foramen of the mandible or the mandible foramen and drives through a canal called the mandible canal and gives another artery or division of that artery, which is the myelohyoid um, artery. And then finally, it becomes a mental artery. Now we'll go to the second part, which is the pterygoid part. The pterygoid part has four branches. So those four branches are, so let's take a look at the four branches. So we have this branch here, it's called the masseteric branch. And then we have the buccal branch. Now the buccal branch will drive all the way down, you know, to supply the teeth. And these branches here are called the dental arteries. So we have these to be the dental arteries. So that's the book of branch. And then we have another branch here that drives all the way upward is a deep, the deep temporal artery. The deep temporal artery, that's the deep temporal artery. All right? So, and then we have the pterygoid branch. So we have the Okay. This is a masseteric branch, the buccal branch, and of course a pterygoid branch. And that's the deep temporal artery. So we have four branches, the deep temporal artery, the pterygoid branch, the buccal artery, and the mesoteric artery, making four. And these are found at the pterygoid region, the pterygoid level. Now the final level, the final layer of the maxillary artery, we have the four in the six branches. So we have, we have, um, this artery that drives all the way up, that's the pharyngeal artery, that's the pharyngeal artery, and then we have a descending palatine artery. A descending palatine artery. That's a descending palatine artery. And then we have a posterior. That's a posterior superior alveolar artery. A posterior superior alveolar artery and then here we have this artery that drives into the sphenopalatine foramen and that is the sphenopalatine foramen palatine artery 
and right there we have the artery to the pterygoid canal which is the median artery so this is the artery to the median canal the artery to median canal or the pterygoid canal artery to pterygoid canal all right so let's see how much arteries we have here we have the sphenopalatine artery one we have two we have three we have four we have five and then we have six so these are the arteries of the last um, portion of the maxillary artery now we said we're going to talk a little bit on the middle meningeal artery now the middle meningeal artery which is one of the branches of the maxillary artery actually now remember that the this is a cranium the cranial cavity and the brain is covered right in here right now if we have the brain the brain is also covered by other membranes which are called meninges and the meninges are the dura meninges we have the arachnoid and the pier matter okay however the the dura matter has two layers we have the periosteal dura layer all right and the meningeal dura layer so the periosteal dura layer runs on the periosteum and what happens is that when this artery runs into this cavity it is actually running on the wall of the skull and the periosteal dura matter of the meninges so and they usually run at the level of the terrier so this will run on this portion so this is the artery okay and the artery runs through the foramen spinosum and then begin to run so it gives two branches it has a posterior branch and anterior branch so the anterior branch inside can is usually vulnerable to laceration if you have a, a fracture of the teria at that level so if individuals suffer a blow at the side of the head usually you may have a rupture of, of a, a rupture of that artery that can lead to uh, epidural hematoma and that's very important to take note of now i guess you guys this is a little bit complicated but if you follow the video one after the other you would see how i have represented each and every one of you thank you very much for your time